see. Recording has started. All right. Take it away, Mauricio. All right. Well, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mauricio Orozco. I work for the uh, Commission for Minority Affairs. And uh, essentially what I do is my title, per se, is Public Information Coordinator. And uh, basically what that means is I pretty much manage the social media for the commission. I um, also do the website, of course, using Drupal. And um, I was actually able to go to DrupalCon um, this past month. And this is my first time, so I was pretty excited to go. And as you all know, it was on the West Coast, so it was always good, good to go back uh, on the West Coast. I haven't been there in a while. And uh, basically, I'm pretty much new to Drupal. I've been doing it since um, pretty much all the state agencies have gone to Drupal. Um, I imagine all of them by now. So it's been about, let's say about five months using Drupal now. Um, my specific agency, we're currently using Drupal 7. So, um, you know, this is a whole new experience for me. So I totally enjoyed it. I'm just going to go over some of the things that, you know, some of the calls to action, some of the things that were mentioned primarily and prominently during uh, the whole DrupalCon. And uh, have a brief presentation here. And hopefully you all can see that. Yep, you're up. All right, cool. So this is my first time using it, so if I do something wrong, just yell at me and I'll try to fix it. <laughs> we'll be nicer than that. <laughs> okay, cool. So the agenda for tonight, I know it seems like a lot, but we'll go through this pretty quickly. Uh, first thing we'll consider is the updates on Drupal 7. Again, uh, something that impacts me directly and most of our state agencies here in South Carolina, because we use, from to my knowledge, they still use Drupal 7. Uh, updates on Drupal 8, uh, transitioning to updates on Drupal 9, when it's coming out, what can you expect, all that good stuff. And these next two topics were pretty much hit very extremely heavily throughout both days, were accessibility, diversity, inclusion. Now, this really hit home for me on both ends because, of course, diversity, inclusion, I work for the Commission of Minority Affairs, so obviously this is something that um, we deal with every day, I and mean, we're the agency for it here in South Carolina. Uh, I'm going to end off with calls to action, and finally, we'll give some times uh, for your questions. All right, so let's go ahead and start with uh, Drupal 7. Um, now, according to the information that was presented at DrupalCon, Drupal 7 will have community support until November of 2021. So that still gives you kind of like two years, more or less, to make that transition. Uh, the point they really wanted to make is if you're still using Drupal 8 or Drupal 7, you really need to upgrade to Drupal 8. Now, um, of course, again, affecting me directly because I'm still using Drupal 7. So uh, having conversations back and forth with uh, se.gov, who basically manages pretty much all the agency websites and trying to get to that point. I know it took them forever. It took them about a year to get all the agencies on board at Drupal. So I imagine it's going to take at least that long to get everyone on Drupal 8 and going forward. Now, as far as Drupal 8 is concerned, I know you probably know this already. It came out a couple of days ago. Uh, Drupal 8.70 is now available. Um, made the download update. Uh, some of the... Uh, features that were mentioned that uh, were coming to 8.7 uh, where the new is a new media library interface. Uh, you want me to demo. It's now multilingual, which is great. Something I appreciate. And uh, the end of PHP 5 support. I know that one of y'all mentioned that earlier. Uh, if you want more, uh, maybe a, a link to have it with more information as far as what's included with that update, uh, that's linked down there. Now, Drupal 9, uh, this was pretty much the biggest conversation through the whole two days as far as upgrades and updates. Um, it's targeted, targeted to be released uh, June of 2020. Um, they claim it'll be easier to update it once you have Drupal 8, the easier transition to move to Drupal 9 uh, with the caveat that deprecations are managed. And this is probably the most common question throughout the whole two days 
was if I have Drupal 7, can I just wait to upgrade to Drupal 9? And they emphatically said, no, absolutely not. Do not wait to Drupal 9 if you're still on 7. Go ahead, upgrade to Drupal 8. Don't wait to Drupal 9. And there's something they just repeated and repeated over and over again. So they seem a little bit serious about it. They don't want people to just skip a version because they thought it was counterproductive at this point. Now, um, one of the topics that they hit as well is accessibility. Um, you know, these are some of the examples of accessibility that I know of. Um, it kind of really hit home to me, really, because, you know, I, before I, you know, I knew it was important, um, but I did not to the extent that they presented that. I mean, they compared uh, to, you know, they had a presentation about civil rights and they incorporated this whole thing about accessibility as well. So we have to make sure that, you know, our websites have the accessibility. Uh, they made a big emphasis on testing uh, your website, uh, just using your keyboard or just using the arrow keys to go through it. Um, so it, it, really, it really hit it home to me. Um, we here in South Carolina, we have several agencies on a state level that uh, help out with that. I'm not sure if ABLE South Carolina is per se a state agency, but they are typically our contact here uh, as well in involving accessibility and whatnot. There, um, I know there's some plugins or pretty much help guides that I've seen from Drupal, and they were there, of course. Uh, some of the vendors were there as well that uh, help out with that, where they can basically you're testing your website and to see, give you a score and gives you specifically what needs to be addressed as far as accessibility is concerned. And some of the tools that I found uh, and they mentioned are at that website as well. So uh, that was kind of one of the two big topics. Um, they really want, you know, us Drupal users to be focused on accessibility, uh, to take it serious and uh, to really test our websites out. Now, another section, the other section that I mentioned that was heavily sp spoken of was diversity and inclusion. Um, there is a Drupal diversity group on uh, through social media. Uh, the prominent one that I've seen is the Slack group. That seems to be a pretty active group. And I'm pretty sure they have Twitter and Facebook as well. So being involved in that, um, during the Birds of a Feather, one of them was a birds of feather and just in Spanish. So that's something that, you know, I was part of. And same issue came up again, as they mentioned, uh, I guess they were veterans there at DrupalCon. And they had mentioned before how it's frustrating that a lot of the community support in Spanish is not really up to par or it's just non-existent. Uh, so we're looking for ways. Uh, we pretty much started, tried to start a little group where we can go ahead and as much as we can translate anything that comes out of community support into Spanish. And we had a good group there from various countries. We had somebody from Nicaragua, we had somebody from uh, various people from Colombia, uh, from Mexico, and of course I was there as well. So uh, kind of, it's a good mix because, you know, just like with any languages, language is spoken differently in different parts of the world, different parts of the same country as well. So to have that uh, diversity and that variety helps out in the translations as well. So we, you know, shared our information. We're just trying to spearhead this campaign. And one of the main gripes was like, yeah, we've been talking about this every year. How we're going to do this, uh, you know, translation thing in Spanish that never comes to fruition. So hopefully this time around, we'll be able to uh, get this into effect. So uh, again, diversity and inclusion. Um, here at the commission, that's our main objective, uh, trying to influence us to a certain point legislation that would help um, those underrepresented uh, communities within the state and to get, you know, uh, to a certain point, we we'll also uh, provide cultural education as well to businesses. Um, sometimes businesses see an influx of a specific community come in and a lot of times they'll contact us and say, hey, we have uh, several workers from X country. We really don't understand them, we don't understand their culture. Can, can you send somebody from your agency to come in and give some kind of training as far as uh, their culture and their customs and whatnot? So um, 
it's a big thing. Uh, they gave some of the data, which was kind of shocking and kind of disturbing. Uh, we have native populations here in South Carolina, and to find out that 0.2% of all uh, people in the tech business are Native Americans is very disturbing. Um, and also we saw we, they gave low numbers for African Americans and Hispanics as well. So obviously trying to encourage uh, getting programs out there that would help. Uh, we know that, you know, infrastructures are for these uh, communities is usually not as what we would want them to be, but just trying to again help with uh, collaborate with other agencies and other uh, organizations that can help uh, these communities so they can have an opportunity to uh, be able to do these things. Uh, I know here the Department of Commerce, South Carolina Department of Commerce has uh, SC dot, it's SC codes. It's basically a free website where anyone in South Carolina can go in and they can learn HTML, CSS, Java, JavaScript, pretty much all your basic um, programming languages for free online. Uh, they go from pretty much beginner to all the way down to a 12 week course. So it, it provides that information. So of course, we're trying to get that information out to our minority community so they can take advantage of this and trying to encourage entrepreneurships as well. So this it's like pretty much the perfect dragon, uh, well, dragon con, look at me, <laughs> my mind is in September in Atlanta, but pretty much the perfect Drupal con to attend for me and for my agency, uh, pretty much the best one I could attend. So calls to action. Um, these are the three things that they mentioned uh, needs to be addressed immediately. Improve diversity and inclusion in our communities, again, across the board something we all could work on. Start reviewing the use of deprecated code now. That was something that they were really adamant about. And the last one is to refocus on the automated upgrades problem. So these are the calls to action that we have uh, going forward. And that's pretty much it. I try to keep it nice and simple. I know you guys probably have a lot more knowledge than I do, I'm pretty sure of it. But if, uh, if there are any questions I can answer, I'd be definitely happy to try. <laughs> this SC code thing is cool. I, didn't, I just tossed it in the chat because I, I hadn't seen that before. Yeah, that is neat. That's really cool. So Mauricio, did you go to any good presentations or anything that stood out to you? Or is this mostly just kind of what the, the general vibe in the era was from? Yeah, it's just a general vibe. Um, they really try to focus on uh, inclusion and diversity. Um, try to make it part of the DNA, and that's just something on the side that you just have statistics for. And that again, that really goes into what we do here at the agency. So they present a lot of good data that we use in the in the commission. Um, you know, I saw zero point two percent of Native Americans. That just that just blew my mind because I know in South Carolina we have a directory of various Native American owned businesses. And there are at least three or five of them that are involved in the tech business. So to me, that's like, okay, wait a minute, what's going on here? We need to uh, focus and address these items. So, you know, it's really good data for us so we can go back and when we have these conversations with legislators, hey, look, your constituents are not in the tech field, yet they're, most of them are in poverty. How can we address this issue by using technology and these free resources we have within the state or let's make legislation that helps these communities out so it's just it was really eye-opening to hear that uh and again the accessibility you know I, I personally i thought you know i was pretty much handling it i mean like, okay i got accessibility yeah whatever i can you know go through uh the website uh through just be using the, the arrow keys but they also emphasis of course using the alt text for your pictures um, they showed one website where they didn't use that. So literally when they would have the reader going, they would real, literally read HTTPS backslash 567. So obviously that's not a good user experience. So obviously you want to make sure that you have those alt texts on there describing what, uh, what picture or what video is on there. Uh, so it, it was really, I mean, it really hit home to me. So I really appreciated all that information that I gave out. I think another incentive too, as far as um, 
because I mean, a lot of this too, I mean, you're, you're trying to almost sell the, cause it's work to be done to like make a site accessible and trying to get that to fit into priorities with like an organization, like I work for an organization and you know, everything's done by hours, but I would imagine most places are very, very much like that. Um, I think another incentive too, um, is just the SEO value that it brings to a site. Um, you know, being, you know, a site that's accessible versus one that's in a set or not, a site, I don't want to say inaccessible, probably not the right word, but, um, you know, not not as high of a level of accessibility, I guess, um, that could really affect uh, SEO or, you know, leave some, some SEO points on the table, so to speak. So, I mean, I think that would probably be a good way to um, maybe help sell it to, to people who are setting priorities or, you know, assigning resourcing and resource. I don't really know if there's a good argument against accessibility. Right. I mean, like, you're fundamentally talking about semantic markup, which... Like, yes, there's some like lift to learn like WCAG, but like semantic markup will make your application easier to deal with in the future. Updates will be faster and easier to maintain. It's uh, less like spaghetti code for devs to deal with. It opens you up to additional audiences and like you hit all the accessibility checkboxes. You can't work with government without it. Um, oh, yeah, and you won't get sued into oblivion, whether you're the owner of the website or you're the <laughs> building it. Like, that's a real threat now. I, yeah. I think that threat's going to continue to increase. I think a lot of the places outside of government and education haven't been noticing that yet, but I think that's an increasing threat. I mean, the place that I get pushback, you know, and see pushback continues to be designers uh, because it does limit their options. Um, you, there are things that are hard to make a keyboard do or impossible to make a keyboard do uh, and you know the color ranges you know I, I have worked with clients who have to would have to change their brand standards because the, gonna, there's not enough contrast in the brand standard I was gonna ask if it was mostly like the color contrast issue or like uh, keyboard naviga navigability those are the two th those are the two I've seen the other getting your forms right, getting your tab orders right, getting help techs in place. As far as I'm concerned, there's no justifiable reason not to do that other than laziness. Um, it's the, you know, fly out menus are super hard to get to work right on a keyboard. Uh, and not that we shouldn't conquer that problem, but it is a hard problem. Uh, and it's not like they're not great patterns yet on some of the menu types. And I think the, uh, and the other one is the, uh, uh, it's the color contrast in places that have long-standing brand traditions mm. and it's like that's great but your orange is the you know clashes with your gray it's just not enough contrast you have to crank it up yeah uh, and it's not like we're setting this rule <laughs> um, it will's right too like it, there is like the seo value it will and what i assume is docker in the background like it adds uh, SEO. No, that was leo that was my side yep oh, dang it that was the employee. At the thanks, moment. thanks, Leo. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, they did show some warning examples of of just that. What I mentioned, you know, Drupal sites that didn't have any of that alt text or semantics, and <laughs> just terrible. I mean, they they tested with these with the audio reader, and you know, they just read the whole website and people didn't even bother even to have something to click off of. They were just literally just copy and paste the whole website and just put it on there. So looks terrible. Accessibility is off. Just everything. So obviously I felt pretty good. <laughs> I was like, well, I know my website in the gray is but ain't that bad. So uh, I felt pretty good after that. Yeah, back in my um, back in the days, uh, my early days of Drupal, one of my early clients was a, um, a nonprofit out of Augusta, Georgia, where they helped people um, who had disabilities, mostly like hearing and vision and disabilities, um, just find work and that sort of thing. And um, that was my first experience dealing with accessibility. I mean, this was seven, eight years ago. Um, but I remember one thing that really kind of took away from that is just the JAWS machines, like the, the, the screen readers that you were referring to. Those things are wild. I mean, just to be able to hear how fast somebody can actually process the text that's the, the audible text that's coming out of it, that's incredible. Um, but yeah, I mean, it definitely brings a whole different perspective over just like building a website. And I mean, a lot of that too, just kind of, um, or at least from my perspective as like a developer, you know, just a lot of the, 
I mean, accessibility first, I think is a, an initiative or a made up initiative, right? As made up or just kind of grab some words out of the air. But, um, but you know, as you're building things, you know, go ahead and include alt tags, go ahead and wrap things in, you know, T tags and, and then not just, you know, just going through tab order and just kind of be mindful of that as you're building, but it just makes the, <clears throat> makes the time where you're doing those accessibility audits that much more, you know, easy to kind of implement and kind of clean up. Now, the only other place I've, I wonder about with accessibility is, is getting, it's one thing to get alt tags and whatnot onto images, which I think is critical. Getting good tags. That's, that's exactly that's, what I was like, going like, to say. That's something people need yeah. training to because it's not, you know, if you're putting up a portrait of a, you know, a famous person, right? If it's like picture of man, like <laughs> that yeah. will meet standards, but is it useful? <laughs> Um, yeah, and, right. and that image is trying to convey some, like you've picked that image to convey something about that person and how do you get that captured appropriately? But like, it, yeah, th those are, two, I think that's the place I'd love to get everybody the debate up to because then it's at, you're like, you're, then you're debating content and the hard part of getting it right, not whether or not we should do it at all. Yeah, I just want to slap the, the, the image title and this is the alt tag. Just break your, uh, I know how you work, Will. Just break your, like, your image proxy so none of your images load and see <laughs> what page loads with a missing image just says horse or man. Horse man. Horse man. <laughs> Actually, I think man on a horse might not be a terrible one. If you describe who the man is, which is a nondescript man. But. That's awesome. So Mauricio, did you have a, I mean, overall, did you have a good time at DrupalCon? He said it was your first one. I mean, did it meet your expectations, exceed them? Or um, I guess, what was your takeaway? I mean, obviously the, the accessibility in D789. Um, I, I don't know if this was the norm to have it two days. Is two days usually the norm? Because I kind of felt like the second day was a little bit rushed where we could have had maybe a third day. Is that the norm or is it just like usually two days? It, the, the, yeah, it, it's been, this was the new format. So they've been playing oh. with the number of tracks and you, there were actually a couple of days like of pre-conference stuff to try to expand out a bit. Um, yeah. But all that had extra fees and not everybody figured out how to use the new oh. <laughs> pattern. Right. So, I mean, I think it was in total, there was four days of stuff um, because they're you know, trying to de handle different audiences and, grow it a bit uh, okay i mean the the program itself was great um i think it was a good information there was a variety throughout the day again they really put in uh through each section they had at least one talk or one section about diversity inclusion and accessibility so it's pretty much you had the whole day throughout the whole thing um i think the biggest part that i liked the most was the networking just sitting down with people and you know, kind of feeling intimidated at the beginning because, you know, I'm so new to this. Just finding out there are people like me as well. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm not as good as I thought I was. And then, of course, you had the people who were very, who were very versed like you guys are. And uh, it was great. It was a great experience. It didn't hurt that it was 3,000 miles away from where I am <laughs> right now. So getting away as far as I could from office drama is always a plus. But... Um, Change of scenery is always a good thing. Yes, thank goodness. Um, but it, this, it, it, the network was great. They had uh, a lot of sessions as well in kind of lunchtime where you could sit down, just talk to people about various topics. Uh, one of the main topics, again, uh, sound like a broken record, but they had one session that was just all talk about diversity and inclusion. So I got to sit down. There were tables everywhere, free breakfast, and we just talked about you know, the issues that we have, uh, you know, where we're coming from with diversity, with inclusion. Uh, there were several several females there that were just happy. I was like, hey, you know, it's great, you know, to see females here as well. Then you had the female minority person there. So I was like, oh, this is double great. <laughs> and just hearing from them, just sitting down and, you know, being able to see what their day-to-day -day is like. And, you know, you come a little bit more empathetic what they have to go through. So all that was great information. So it was great. I loved it. Um, if it's in the budget again, <laughs> uh, if I don't make any trips next year, I'll definitely try to make it to the one in Minneapolis next year. So we'll see how that goes.